Today we're talking about a young woman who disappeared from a Texas nightclub. Today we're talking about the disappearance of Brandy Wells. Brandy Wells was 23 years old at the time of her disappearance in 2006. Brandy disappeared on August 2nd of 2006. Earlier that day, Brandy had went to her mom's house, who she was no, she was out of the house. She was not living at her mom's house. Asked for money for gas, and she also changed some of her clothes to go out on to, to go to go to this nightclub. Brandy, while there, asked if her sister would like to go out with her that night, and she declined. She also asked her mother, and she as well declined. When she left her mother's house, she went to a bowling alley that had a bar where she, her godmother, who was working as a bartender, and she had half of a drink, and she talked to her godmother, and I think she even, and I believe she even tried to get her to go with her to this nightclub, and she did not go and her her grandmother declined as well because she was working her her godmother was a little bit concerned about brandy going to this club alone and she told her to be careful in a weird twist of fate her godmother also knew someone else who went missing about 20 years beforehand disappeared who disappeared as well going out to nightclub brandy went to this club it was called uh, the grand central station in Longview, Texas. If you look at the map here, there's a huge parking lot to this club. And as of 2023, it appears to be closed, permanently closed. But uh, there was a huge parking lot around this place. Supposedly when she was going was ladies night so she could get in for free. But she didn't have a lot of gas. So while she was there, it was reported she tried to talk to people get out, uh, talk to people about getting gas money. She's seen on camera entering the club. This is the security footage of Brandy Wells. This is her right here. I've highlighted her. Notice she's by herself. She hands the ID to the person at the front desk. And it appears that the employee gives her a wristband. She's not showing any signs of intoxication. And she's by herself. Leaving around two hours later. And later that next morning when she was supposed to come home she didn't come she didn't come back home to her mom's her mom was not overly concerned about it but when she waited the next day and she didn't hear anything about where brandy was or what happened to her that's when the police got involved her mom at the time i believe thought she was staying at one of her friend's house it was later found on investigation that brandy's mom was not aware that she was going to this club alone. She also thought she was staying in Tyler, Texas, going to this place called the Electric Cowboy. She did not realize she was traveling from Tyler, Texas to Longview to go to this other club. And it's about a 45 minute drive, so it's a significant. The next day though, on August 3rd, a police officer found Brandy's car, Brandy's car along the side of the road and he tagged it, but there was no warrants or, you know, the car was registered. There was no issue with the car, so he just drove off. And that was a big problem in the investigation, too, because they found her car, but they didn't, the police didn't connect the, the, the car to the missing person until a couple days later. In Brandy's car, though, they did find a phone in the car, but it was the phone of her ex-husband, and uh, Brandy was was married to him for around two years and then he went off to the military and then that actually ended so I think that put strain on their marriage and they actually ended up getting divorced but he has not appeared to be a suspect in this case there was also a gas tank found in the car and Brandy's friends family they didn't believe she carried a gas tank and that was strange and also the car seat Brandy was a very short woman she wasn't even five feet tall it was pulled up further back so someone who was like 6'2 could could drive the car so that was very suspicious also in the investigation the police thought there was another woman that looked similar to brandy and for six weeks they thought that woman on the security camera footage was brandy and it turned out she wasn't there was a 10 minute error in the security footage and that caused time to be lost in the investigation six weeks too 
but it was later found out and confirmed that that original person was not Brandy, and Brandy was seen 10 minutes earlier going into the club. Also, Brandy's cell phone was found around a week later, and there was very suspicious things that happened on the phone. There were several calls made after her disappearance on the phone for a short time, and some people believe it's like drug dealers calling people. Uh, that was never really uh, found out to my knowledge, but that was very suspicious. They eventually did find the phone, and they found the person who, who found the phone, and he said he just saw it alongside the road, and it was buzzing or ringing when he picked it up, so he picked it up. But that lead has not been further developed. Uh, that lead has not led to any resolution in this case, and that's really all we have with this case. This case is known primarily for errors in the investigational process, not connecting the dots, and uh, filling uh, some wasted time. This could have possibly been because this is, was smaller police departments. Also, Brandy was an adult at the time of her disappearance. She was over 18, so that most likely caused some issues. Or the level of concern from law enforcement was not... And immediately, the, the level of concern from the community was not extremely high. And um, that's really all the information regarding this case that's out there. There's been no resolution. At this point, Brandy would be 40 years old, and there's been no trace of her. There has been a, a there was a body found near the phone, and that appeared to not be Brandy, and it was ruled out of the skeletal height of this person and the dental records. So we're pretty certain that wasn't Brandy, but uh, this case is cold. It does feel like though there could there, there would be people who knew something, people at the club that night. There was even a phone number found in Brandy's car, and the police reached out to that person, and then they found out that this person was, uh, they just had a, a, like a club, nightclub conversation. Hi, how's it going? And he said that Brandy needed gas, and that's why he talked to her. But it's kind of weird that somehow he got, she got his phone number. But it appears no further breaks have happened in the case with, with that uh, person. And, and that person, as far as I know, has been eliminated as a suspect or a person of interest. And in it closing to coming to the end of 2023, the, this case remains closed. And that's really all the information we have regarding this case. If you want to hear more true crime content from YouTube's best amateur detective, Subscribe to Crime Da today.